and Al Hormuzan, he had a number of, of treaties with the Muslims. He got defeated in Persia by the Muslims once. He signed a truce, he sued for peace, and he had to pay a, a tribute. And after a while, he reneged on the tribute and then he fled. And then Al Hormuzan fought the Muslims. Again, he was defeated. Twice he was defeated. And then the second time he sued for peace also. This was a, a, a governor. And he then had to pay a tribute. And then after a while, he fled and didn't pay the tribute again. Third time, he gets captured. And when he gets captured, Al Hormuzan comes to Medina. He's brought to Medina. And this Persian governor is he's dressed in finery and he's dressed in gold and jewelry and all that type of stuff. He comes with everything. He brings it, he, he's brought with it all. And the Muslims are who are who are bringing him, they're looking for Umar al Khattab. They go to the masjid, he, they're told that he's in the masjid. They don't find Umar. They go to his house and they don't find Umar. Where his family says he's in the masjid. Then they go to the masjid again, they look again. And this time they find Umar radiallahu anhu and he is sleeping in the in a, in a corner of the masjid. And so Humuzan, he says, where's Umar? And they say, he's right there, he's sleeping. And everybody's being quiet. They don't want to disrupt Umar radiallahu anhu. And so Al-Hurmuzan says, this is Umar al-Khattab. They're like, where's his, where's his guards? Where's his like, Where's his, uh, who, who are the people protecting him? And they say there's nobody protecting him. There are no guards. And so, you know, the famous statement of you, uh, you judged or you ruled Umar and you were fair, you were just Umar. And so you slept Umar. You ruled, you were just, so you slept. Meaning that the reason why Umar who's able to walk around without bodyguards is because of his justice. And so Umar radiallahu anhu, when he, when he woke up, he heard their talking and then he woke up. And then he saw this man. He said, Al-Hurmuzan? Is this Al-Hurmuzan? And they said to him, yes. And so Umar radiallahu anhu, he says, what is the result? What did you find the result of your treachery to be, Al-Hurmuzan? What did you find the result of your treachery to be? Like, you've, you've betrayed us twice already. This is your third time. Look at what the result is. You're here in, in Al-Masjid al Nabawi with us. And then... Uh, Umar radiallahu anhu refused to talk to him until they removed him from his, his finery and they gave him normal clothes, at least for the Muslims, for him to wear. And then Umar radiallahu anhu, he, uh, there's a, 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 an interesting story that's mentioned. that Al-Hurmuzan was afraid of being executed. I mean, he had committed treason a number of times. He'd caused casualties for the Muslims. This is, this is a, a guy who, who's deserving of being executed. And so Umar radiallahu anhu, and he's, in, he's chained. And Umar radiallahu anhu, uh, he asked Umar radiallahu anhu for water. And Umar, he presents Islam to him. He says, no, I'm not interested, but I would like some water. And so then uh, Umar uh, has water brought to him and his hands are shaking. He can't take it. And Umar says to him, just relax. It's all right. And then he says, I'm afraid that you're going to kill me. Uh before I drink my water, and Umar al says, "No, you're fine. You're okay. You're not going to, do, um, you're not going to be executed before you drink your water." And so he takes that water, and so he takes that water, and then he casts it. He casts it, and Umar was like, "What did you do?" And he said, "You said that I wouldn't be executed before I drink that water, and I've cast that water. I'm not drinking it." And so Umar al says, "Okay, well, you're still going to be executed." And then the Sahaba are like, "No, Umar, you can't do that. Like, what do you mean you can't do that?" Anas ibn Malik says, um, Anas ibn Malik, he says, I, uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, you, you gave him, you gave him protection, saying that you wouldn't kill him unless he broke that, uh, unless he drank that, until he drank that water, and he, I mean, that water is gone. And so Umar radiallahu said to Anas, he said, Wayhak, do you think that I would give protection to the killer of al-Barra ibn Malik, and so, and so, and so, and so? Like literally, Hormuzan is responsible for the death of Al Barra ibn Malik, Anas ibn Malik's brother, and Al Barra ibn Malik is one of the great, great companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And yet, Umar radiallahu anhu says, "Okay, khalas. Like, 
I, I given you uh, amnesty or 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 um, uh, protection. And so Al-Hurmuzan then says, I bear witness that there's nothing worthy of worship except Allah that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his messenger. And he accepted Islam and he said, I didn't want the people to say that I accepted Islam out of fear of execution. However, Al-Hurmuzan, and for two years he lived amongst the Muslims in Medina and he was, you know, he was given from Baytul Mal. That being said, he was still someone who was accused of hypocrisy. 